Ashley Rooney. I'm here with John Stewart, who knew Dan through the Kennedy Library and was instrumental in Dan getting that job. So John, tell me about working with Dan. Well, let, let me tell you about the, the instrumental in getting that job uh, bit. Uh, I don't think I was really instrumental. It was more accidental, uh, but I, I was um, in 1968, I was asked to uh, be in charge of uh, creating a temporary Kennedy Library in Waltham. The permanent Kennedy Library to be built in Cambridge was delayed and delayed and delayed because of, uh, for site reasons, uh, the site was not available. Uh, in any case, uh, there was, uh, I was the acting director in 1969 and I didn't want the job of permanent director at all. And I was trying to get people uh, involved uh, Kennedy's and other people to think about a permanent director. And, uh, and I did, had a luncheon meeting one day in 19, early 1970 with Dan Fenn for two, and I set up the luncheon for two reasons. One, to uh, interview Dan. I was doing oral history interviews at the time and Dan had worked in the White House uh, during the Kennedy administration. And secondly, I thought Dan might have some suggestions for people who would be good candidates to be director of the Kennedy Library. So Dan and I had this long luncheon and great discussion. And at the end of it, I said, gee, Dan, uh, might you be interested in being director of the Kennedy Library? And he, I, I'll never forget, he looked at me and he said, well, yeah, you know, that's an idea. I, I'll think about it. Uh, so one thing led to another and Dan Fenn was appointed director of the Kennedy Library, the first director of the Kennedy Library uh, in, in the fall of 1971. Dan had one sort of condition for becoming director of the Kennedy Library and the condition was that uh, he could he could uh, add to the agenda of the Kennedy Library a program of education. Uh, Dan was convinced that the Kennedy Library had a lot of potential uh, for teaching people something about government and politics, and he, right from the start. Uh, intended to make that a, a big part of the, the whole mission of the Kennedy Library. Mm. It was a fairly vague idea in Dan's mind when he became director, uh, but a year or so later, I was appointed uh, director of education. Oh. And, um, the, the two of us succeeded, I think, in putting together an educational program at the Kennedy Library that, that really changed the direction of, of presidential libraries. Presidential libraries, um, when Dan started in 1970, uh, was, were simply archives, not simply, but were archives and, and uh, uh, collections of papers for scholars to come in and use. And, um, and big public museums, uh, which were fine uh, for, for, uh, for telling people about uh, the president, uh, the life of a president and the administration. And this is what the Kennedy Library was going to be. Uh, but Dan, as I say, added the, the third component and that was education and we, uh, together, put to, uh, organized uh, forums and conferences and lectures and all sorts of things. No, oh, uh, interesting. Not just Kennedy's life. What kind of things? Not just you... Kennedy's life at all. Oh. In fact, just yesterday, I got in the mail, as did thousands of other people, uh, a big flyer. Uh, for Kennedy Library forums in the spring of 2001, uh, today, this month, 
And among the topics that are going to be discussed uh, online uh, in the Kennedy Library forums, and usually uh, these are live at the Kennedy Library, uh, but I have the flyer right here. Uh, and, and among the topics to be discussed are religion and politics, then and now, US immigration, past policy, new directions, Mm. Uh, police and justice reform, the triumph of Nancy Reagan, a book uh, apparently written about Nancy Reagan, and uh, a forum entitled America United Finding Common Ground. Uh, so no, it's not just about Kennedy at all, uh, but it's about the, the, the subjects of these forums and these conferences of politics and history um, in, a, in a very, very large sense, mm. uh, which we felt was a very appropriate thing for the Kennedy Library to be doing. And interestingly, um, the people in Washington, our bosses in, at the National Archives in Washington, didn't really agree with Dan Fenn when he uh, launched this uh, uh, big initiative. Uh, but uh, they very, very quickly came to see that uh, it was a natural part of presidential libraries. And as I say, now all of the presidential libraries, I forget exactly how many there are, there are at least a dozen or 15, they all have public forums, they all have conferences, they all do uh, these, these, uh, these programs to uh, teach people about it politics and, and history. That's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, there you have these great big beautiful buildings and it's nice to have people come in and discuss and move on in the in the future. So Dan, Dan, was, Dan and you began that. Dan and I began that. Dan, Dan, <laughs> it was Dan's idea. I had been there, uh, as I mentioned, for several years before Dan and it, it never really uh, occurred to me. It wasn't my idea at all. It was Dan's idea and I happened to be there and uh, had, had, a, had a bit of a role, I guess, in implementing uh, the thoughts that Dan had. And Dan and I together uh, uh, did it for a number of years. And then Dan left the library in 1987, I guess it was. And, uh, and Dan and I went from being colleagues in, at the Kennedy Library to being great friends, which we were for the rest of his life. That's what everybody says about him, that he was such a great and wonderful friend. And pe the people talked about the, the having meals with him and what a wonderful friend and how we remembered birthdays and important moments in your life and things like that. Do you have any incidents that you remember from that friendship that you want to share or? Yeah, Dan was exactly 10 years older than me. Yeah. Uh, and, and so as we <laughs> progressed through our uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, and Dan into his 90s, I'm not quite there. Uh, Dan was always sort of a, uh, an inspiration for me, uh, just showing me what could be done by someone uh, as they got older. And Dan just kept going and going. It, it, was a, it was amazing. He was a very, very inspirational guy. And as you mentioned, Dan uh, just had an impact on everyone he, he came in contact with. It was that was amazing. Um, I used to have lunch with him every every month or two or three, and uh, but would would communicate and would and he always always called me on my birthday, yeah. <laughs> which was amazing. which was really amazing uh, when you think of it. But uh, he was a very very inspirational man. He also sounds like he was quite a trailblazer to come out with that idea of having the presidential libraries doing educational programs 
or anybody I take who wanted to come. Um, that, that's a great idea. You think of those big expensive buildings sitting there and now they become alive again. It's yes, not Dan, Dan was determined to make of the John F. Kennedy Library in Boston, uh, to make it a major uh, institution, to make it, to, to, to make it an important part of the, of the, the whole Boston, greater Boston community. Uh, and Dan spent a lot of time in the very early years going around talking to people, uh, talking to political leaders, business leaders, uh, leaders of um, different cultural organizations, and explaining exactly what the Kennedy Library was going to be, because there were a lot of misconceptions about the Kennedy Library. Uh, most people just assumed it would be a a tourist attraction and a, a, a research library, and that would be it. But Dan had a, had a notion that the, 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 instant, the Kennedy Library could become an important institution, import, an important part of the Boston landscape, uh, which it has. It, it's uh, in terms of its building, uh, it, it is a very, very important. Uh, uh, structure and uh, an important facility. And, and as I say, Dan spent a lot of time in the early years uh, before the library was actually dedicated in 1979, uh, just talking to people and, and, and explaining his idea of what the Kennedy Library might become and, and hopefully and it did become what yes. he hoped it would be. And hopefully it will continue in that path. Yes, yes. So are there anything else that you would like to tell us about Dan or you really hit the point that I wanted you to bring, which was the whole Kennedy Library stuff. But I wanna be sure you feel that you have said everything you'd like to say before we you know, as I say, I knew him. I knew him for 15 years or so uh, as a colleague at the Kennedy Library, and then uh, Dan left in in uh, 1987 and uh, just went across to the other side of the peninsula at to the University of Massachusetts uh, for a number of years, and uh, I used to see Dan every every month or so for lunch uh, mm. uh, at some kind of a function. And uh, Dan and I went from being colleagues to being very good friends. And, uh, and admittedly, as colleagues, we had disagreed from time to time, uh, which was easy to do with Dan. I mean, you could uh, be very, very candid and uh, argue with Dan about things and, you know, it, Dan was, a, a, like all creative people, he welcomed, he welcomed dissent, he welcomed uh, different points of view. Uh, and so Dan, admittedly, Dan and I had our differences from time to time, but uh, as colleagues, but as friends, we just uh, seem to roll along from the years just piled up from uh, the 1980s to uh, uh, to last to last year. I saw I saw him. Uh, uh, I talked to him on the phone. I think a month or two before he passed away. Uh, I brought some books over to him and I brought a, a draft chapter of the uh, account I'm writing of the early days of the Kennedy Library. I brought that over to him and he called me up. I'll never, never forget it. One afternoon and we had a long, he just he had a long list of comments about my draft chapter of the history of the early history of the Kennedy Library. And he went on and on and on and we went back and forth a little bit. And um, it was a, it was a very, very wonderful relationship. And uh, 
as I say, Dan was an inspiration uh, to me personally. He is 10 years older than me and he just kept doing things and doing things. Uh, it was amazing. Mm. He had ideas about everything. <laughs> there, was, there was nothing you could ask him about that he didn't have a, a thought about or an idea about. He kept up with local politics. He kept up with state politics and you know he and he knew his obviously what was going on nationally um uh, he was just an amazing man yes you must miss him i do miss him i i and, and um, i guess i'm at an age when i've had so many friends and members of my family and every once in a while you, you sort of, the thought just runs through your mind when something comes up. Well, I'll call Dan about, that. oh my God, yeah. Dan's gone. Yeah. Or, uh, and and uh, that happens every once in a while. I, uh, little things come up and I want to share them with, with someone I knew and, uh, and I'll yeah. think about Dan. Uh, Yes, it's a, it's a it's a great loss. Uh, great loss. Yes, I imagine it is. But I thank you for coming and sharing your feelings today. All but, right, but you know, all right, but what? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything I can add about? Let's see. The uh, I assume they'll they'll do some editing of. Yes, so, they will, it's, and it's pretty jumbled. Um, it depends how no it was if you did it very well and i think it would be no longer than an hour and as i said to you on the phone we have quite a few videos that we've done right and you know what you, you he had many kids and many grandchildren on each of which i talked to for over an hour so yeah. you know you can imagine um, this yeah, will be yeah, um, yeah. Often a clip about your work with him in the Kennedy Library, for sure. But the um, important point is that he changed the direction of presidential libraries. Right. He's not, it was not just the Kennedy Library. The Kennedy Library uh, launched this huge educational effort, and I'm proud to say I was a part of it with Dan, uh, but it was, it was basically Dan's idea and in, in every all of the other presidential libraries just saw what the Kennedy Library was doing as so successful and so logical uh, an extension of what presidential libraries should be. And Dan, this this was Dan's notion mm -hmm. uh, that you could that it was very very important to teach people about politics and government. Uh, that, I mean, that, that, that's what John Kennedy would have wanted to do. Yes, yes. Can I ask you a question? Sure. John, can you think of uh, one thing, can you think, think of something that uh, Dan did that was uh, maybe very funny, but very effective in getting his point across? Mm, good question. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm looking at my wife who's in the room here and she she's saying very uh I I don't I can't I think of anything specific. I I can say that I mean D Dan had um Dan was just so unassuming. Um, I, I, I can't think of a specific situation, but I can think of general, I can think of situations where people would be embarrassed or it would be tense. Uh, but Dan, Dan never got tense. Dan was always relaxed about things. Uh, Dan never seemed to be embarrassed about, you know, that something wasn't going that as well as it should have been going. Uh, Dan had a way of 
of just getting people to relax and, and to uh, take things as they came. Um, he, he was, um, He was a, just a very, very easy person to get along with, yet he could, you know, he, he had no trouble dealing with people in very high, important positions. I mean, he could talk to presidents and prime ministers and senators and congressmen and mayors and so forth um, in, a, in a very, dignified way if the situation called for dignity or he could be very relaxed if it's if it called for a relaxed uh, mm. yeah atmosphere now do you know the time when dan uh, may have come into a heated situation and used his powers of calm and relaxation to tone things down I'm not talking about we're about ready to start World War III or something right, like that, right. but maybe coming into a conversation where people were very upset, but he used his manners to help calm things down. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a specific situation. I, I just, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't right That's now. All right. That's um, all right. You, you said what is really important here and what we were looking for. And Anne will be quite pleased with all this. Yeah. So. He was a very creative guy. And then he just, he, I guess the one, the one disagreement we had at the start, Dan was, was, was always very optimistic. Uh, someone would have an idea and and he he would sort of grab it and say oh, talk about everything that was good about the idea and or the potential of the idea and uh, and want to just broadcast it immediately and I was always the guy who would say, oh, wait a minute, Dan, we have to think about this a little bit. We have to slow down. Oh, well, let's, can't slow down too much. And uh, I was frequently the restraint, the restraining guy in the, in the crowd who, Dan would want to charge ahead <laughs> with things. And Who won in that kind of disagreement? Dan would, well, Dan would sometimes win, usually win, I guess. Dan, Dan would often, uh, you know, uh, uh, would, would sort of compromise and Dan would promote something but not go overboard and say, well, John is working out the details, but, That's you know, true. it'll happen, it'll happen. John has to work out some of the details that uh, uh, it, it, will, it will happen. Ah, yeah. So you were the more cautious one who saw what the work had to be done, and he would be the risk taker. That's correct. Dan, Dan was much, much more of a risk taker than I was, and I was probably a little too cautious uh, sometimes about things. Um, Dan but, would. That could be a dynamite partnership, though. Pardon? That could be a very good partnership. Yes, yes, it was. Dan, Dan and I would, I'll never forget, forget, would have meetings with people and uh, Dan would, uh, Dan had a way of just grasping exactly what, what had to be decided and, mm. just, you know, getting to the important points and, and then leaving the details to me and to other people, um, which was fine. I mean, that was our job. I think we've about figured this out.